Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. George W. Bush spent the first nine years of his retirement saying almost nothing in public and good for him. It's a dignified and restrained posture that is longstanding tradition among former chief executives. But nobody's staying silent in 2018, so President Bush is now speaking out, and he has a cause, seeking amnesty for millions of illegal immigrants that his administration allowed into this country. The context for his latest remarks was a speech that Bush was giving in the United Arab Emirates. That's an authoritarian Islamic petrostate. Alongside him as he spoke was Michael Milken, the convicted felon and financier. During his remarks, the former president said he wants immediate amnesty for DACA recipients. Quote, America's their home, he said. Congress has got to get it fixed. Bush explained that we must give citizenship to illegal immigrants as a reward for providing low-wage labor to companies who don't feel like paying American wages. Quote, there are people willing to do jobs that Americans won't do, the former president said. We ought to say thank you and welcome them. Well, this is the magical world of our elites, people who've never had to worry about how illegal immigrants might affect their kids' schools or the crime rate in their gated neighborhoods or the social cohesion of their communities because they're insulated from all of that. Instead, they repeat diversity is our strength three times like a spell and assume the best will happen. The rest of us, as the former president noted, can shut up and say thank you. So how exactly is this faith-based immigration policy working out so far? Well, let's see. We watched Dreamers blockade Disneyland. We watched them harass lawmakers outside their homes to demand an amnesty that they have no legal right to. That's ominous enough. But there are other signs. Here's one. Linda Sarsour. She's a professional activist. She's the child of Palestinian immigrants. You would think that she'd be grateful for the opportunities this country has given her family, especially considering where they came from. But no. Linda Sarsour is not grateful. She hates our country and the people who founded it. During a demonstration yesterday in Washington, Sarsour denounced America and then went on to attack Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer for the color of his skin. Watch this. I'm talking to Chuck Schumer, who's also from Brooklyn. I'm tired of white men negotiating on the backs of people of color and communities like ours. Notice the cheers from the crowd. A lot of people agree with Linda Sarsour, and that should make you nervous. We've invited millions and millions of people into this country in recent years. There are now more immigrants in America right now than at any time in the history of the country. Is America more united than ever before? Is it stronger? Please. It's just the opposite, and everyone knows it. Maybe that's because our elites welcome immigrants by telling them how horrible America is and how bigoted its native population. Our immigrants believe that. Why wouldn't they? It's not their fault. It's ours. We're creating a lot of Linda Sarsours. This is a recipe for civil war. Diverse countries need a reason to stick together. They don't do it organically. Our elites ought to be staying up late, night after night, every night, trying to figure out what that reason is. Why should we hang together? A shared language, a shared culture, a shared set of core beliefs? Pick one. Our ruling class rejects all of those. Just shut up and say thank you. That's their answer. It won't end well. Ivan Sanchez is a Democratic congressional candidate in Texas for the 7th District there, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Sanchez, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tucker, for allowing us to practice democracy and uh, allowing the other side of the aisle to say a few words. Oh, amen. We do every night, and I believe in that with total sincerity. I want to hear That's people right, like That's right, American with. dream. Thank um, you. But maybe we'll agree on this. Tell me your response when you hear a child of immigrants say to a room full of people here illegally, immigrants, this country was founded on the extermination of indigenous peoples. Does that bother you? Well, I believe we're, we're a country of immigrants, right? Uh, everyone from uh, uh, all over the world came here and are still coming here. Uh, but right? uh, we did, uh, in a sense, force our, our, ourselves in. Uh, to create now the greatest country that the world has ever seen. But I guess, um, well, we're not, I mean, I'm not an immigrant. You're probably not an immigrant either. We're not all immigrants, but there are a lot of immigrants I here, am. I agree. And I think a lot of them, oh, you are? Okay, great. Well, I think a lot of immigrants are good people, actually. But I think it's really important 
that they become part of this country. And in order to do that, you have to love the country. Does it bother you when someone that immigrants listen to, like Linda Sarsour says, this is a bad country run by racists, and its history is inherently racist? It's, this country is built on murdering people. Do you believe that? I, I think they're just a little bit frustrating about the uh, lack of representation much in Congress or our legislators. Uh, my friend, I am uh, basically a dreamer uh, with papers. Uh, I was brought to this country uh, at six years old through absolutely no fault of my own. Uh, my mother was actually a prosecuting attorney and my father a geophysicist in the country of Colombia. Uh, and there were, my father was kidnapped, my mother's, mom's office was uh, blown up until a letter came to my mother's office saying, next time you put your kids in the school bus, they're not coming back. So we landed here. I was sold okay. on the idea that we were coming to see the great Disneyland and Bill Clinton, and we had to start all over. But I don't know why I, like, I'm and, so and like, And I'll stop you privileged. there because it's, it's a familiar and a great story, and I'm, I'm in favor of that story. But I just want to get – but the details matter to me. I'm an American citizen, I suppose, like you. Do you think – you said they don't have representation. Do you think people who aren't citizens deserve representation in Congress? I think they're humans, and everybody reserves the respect and dignity most the definitely. I have no idea why. That, that's, Mr. That, that wasn't my I'm question. I'm so privileged to human. be uh, hold on, to hold have stop. that paper. Do, they, do people? Wait, hold on. Do people who are not American uh -huh. citizens deserve to be represented in the Congress of the United States? You suggested they, they were. Deserve I just want to make this clear. They, they, they deserve a voice. They deserve a voice. I think uh, even if well, why we why would they deserve a voice in Ronald the Congress? Reagan, do, Okay, even even if we refer I'm not asking back to Ronald he's Reagan. Not here. I'm, okay, hold on. I'm just asking <laughs> you, so people who are not American citizens deserve to be heard in the Congress. Does that include people living in Namibia or Norway or Iceland? I mean, does the world deserve a voice in Congress? Because are, our understanding was, are, the American understanding was Congress is for American citizens. That's what our democracy the people is. That, yeah, the people that are uh, definitely contributing to our society and live in our neighborhoods definitely do uh, deserve uh, a, a voice. And, you know, if, if we go... If so we citizenship about, uh, doesn't matter. You don't need to be a citizen no, to be course. represented by the Congress. No, no, no. Of, of, of course you do. But there's people that have been living oh. here for longer times than I have. Uh, and pay taxes and take their kids to school and contribute to society and literally well, look, the I'm, not I'm not attacking them. It's just that if you're going to have a country, country you've you got to figure out what it means to be a The number one country in the world. That's what we want to do. This country provided okay. us opportunity. How beautiful is that? We want to make sure yeah. that this country will progress. We want to stay the number one in the world, right? And there's China. I, I, I there's believe Japan, that. And that's why. And Russia, I want that too. Which take is take so, wait, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to let you give your speech because I, I probably agree with a lot of that. I want to remain number one, too. That's why I want to ask you these two questions. Before we, as Americans, let people become citizens and vote in our elections and get represented in that Congress, should we ask them to agree with what's in the Constitution and speak English? Yeah, the thing is that the last immigration policy we had is older than the Internet or computers. It's very outdated. If you want to legally immigrate from Mexico or from no, India, no, 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 the I'm wait sorry. is I'm 25 sorry. I'm gonna, years I'm, old. We're almost out of time, so I'm, gonna try, I'm really going to press you, Ivan. Hold on. I want to press you to answer my question, which is, should we ask that immigrants, before they become citizens, speak English well and agree with the Constitution? I, I agree that they need to learn the language like I have, uh, right? Yes. And, of course, follow the law. Uh, but at times, just like uh, like my mother, right? She came here to the United States all of a sudden. A lot of people cannot wait 25 years to immigrate, so their life well, depends they, they don't, on it. They don't want and to the wait 25 years, they know, but it's not really up to they them. They can't. Is it up to if them? If your family is under, yeah, it's, it, they can't. If their family's life is in danger, would you wait? Oh, but but people's Mr. lives Tucker? are in danger around the world, and I feel sorry for them. But why does that mean they have a right to live in my country? Uh, well, this is the country was found on immigration, and no, this it is, wasn't. Actually. I mean, let's have a, it wasn't. Let's, it wasn't let's founded have... as a haven for the rest of the world. Whatever the poem says, uh, it, 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 that's not true. So, but I'm just saying, where did they get that right? Why do they have a right to move here if their lives are in danger? Well, we we're the most caring world uh, uh, nation in the world, right? Uh, we have asylum, okay. and this that's one of the other ways that I came. And this is not okay. about even uh, they. they Deporting these people would hurt our economy significantly. I mean, well, only deporting not, these okay. the dreamers. Right. We would 
spend okay. about sixty that's, uh, billion dollars. That's outside the look. That's a whole other debate, and I and I, I don't know if you're prepared for that. But, but I mean, thanks a lot for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.